B. Franklin is the nearly 99-year-old daughter of the Pep Boys founder, Jack. A breast cancer survivor, she's sharing her secrets to living a fulfilling life while reminiscing about her late husband's rare World War II photos. With a contagious zest for life, she has entertained a future US president, dined at upscale New York City restaurants, travelled the world and formed lasting friendships with Broadway actors, all while holding the same phone number since 1958. And B joins us now. Good afternoon. How are you today? Good afternoon, or should I say good evening? I am <laughs> yeah. great, thank you. Yes. So what is the secret to living a fulfilling life at almost 99 years old? Well, my husband told me when we were first married, you can't have any negative thoughts about anything. And as the family grew, my boys, I have three sons, they learned that they couldn't be negative about anything either. And so that's what I attribute my long life to, just feeling positive about life. Is that quite hard to do? Because in life, there's many occasions where you want to complain about stuff. Does it take a special kind of person to be like that? No, I think it just have to train yourself. to. There's, there's no reason why you can't cry about something or feel mm. badly about something, but you can't let it simmer in your body and your brain. You just keep on going and living and thinking positively. You're a breast cancer survivor as well. So has that changed your outlook on life? Not at all. I just face it as another inconvenience at the time, and it it hasn't bothered me ever since. Has it made you appreciate life even more because it's something that can be life-threatening for some people? Yes. Yes, it is. And when I hear other people talking about losing a, a parent, a child from cancer of any sort. I've had colon cancer also. Yeah. And uh, you just have to pay attention to your body and make sure that you keep checkups. And then all will be well, hopefully. Yeah. I, said, I think positively so. Even when I would go in for surgery, I knew I was going to come out and be much better than I had been. So what advice would you give to others facing a similar diagnosis who are trying to stay positive? Well, if they have family they have to think about their family and not cause the family to be so concerned that they can't function normally and have faith in your your physicians that you see and as I said just think that it's going to be great at the end of the surgery or whatever you're doing for yourself yes and you're here years later to tell the story did you ever think you'd make it to the age of nearly 99 never never I tell people my parents didn't have any friends who lived beyond 80 mm. and and we're not used to seeing you know other people of course some of my friends have lost lost pet partners, either husbands or wives, and have lost their parents at a young age. And uh, you have to think, and I just take one day at a time is what everybody says, take one day at a time. And that's it. And enjoy your life while you're living it. Don't have regrets. Yeah. So if we go back to the early days of your life, your husband, of course, had a collection of World War II photos that he took. So how did you two first get together as it were well the get together is a long story but (laughs) to make it short um i double dated with him he was he was a very good friend of the young man i had a date with and so we double dated and it was like love at first sight we both knew that we were meant for each other (laughs) and that was how we met so the boy that you were on the date with how did he react he was perfect well they were best friends so he he was my Jerry, who was my husband, uh, the day after we had met, uh, came to the to where I was living and said, uh, "I would like to see you, but I can't because this other fellow is my best friend." And I said, "Don't I have anything to say about it?" Yeah. And he said, "Yes." I said, "Because I'd like to see you also." 
So we called his friend from the house and said, look, I want to date B and she wants to date me. So is it all right with you? And what was his friend going to say? (laughs) And a a month after we met, we married. Wow, that's quick. Hope you didn't rush into it. No, no. And we were married for 51 years. It was a wonderful time. And I bet because you married a month into it, were there people saying it'll never last and you (laughs) proved them wrong? My brother, <laughs> my brother, when I told my parents that I was, had married, he has said to me in front of my parents, it will never last. Yeah. In the meantime, he divorced two wives wow. and I was, I was still married to my husband. Your husband, Jerry Franklin, was a US Army photographer, which I mentioned. Yes. So how did his experiences as a photographer, shape your own perspectives on the war? He brought home copies of uh, every picture that he took. And he was in Dachau. He had pictures of of what a concentration camp was like. And it was horrible. And there were some things that he just never, in his whole life, he never could talk about. I never pushed him and his friends never pushed him to talk about it. And if he did talk about the war, it was about little funny incidents that happened while I was there. But that's, I think, why we had to think positively, because he saw all the negativity that was going on in the world. Yeah. And he brought home enough pictures to fill two albums. And um, and he, he never looked at them. He never looked at those pictures again. Wow. It wouldn't. I suppose it's a time in history where you had to focus on the positives, especially during the war. You had to find ways of keeping positive because it was the worst time in history that's at that right. moment. Yes, that's correct. And mm. I think that's what shaped his life, that war. And what he saw. And did he have a similar attitude to you, just staying positive all the time? <laughs> no. He thought, very, <laughs> he thought very positively. As a matter of fact, uh, he was. I, I went back to for my master's degree when I was 45. Mm. And he was the, the one who cur- encouraged me to do so. He always yeah. was very proud of whatever I did. Yeah. So that, that made me feel very good. Going back to get your master's degree at 45, I suppose, are you the kind of person that it's never too late to just challenge yourself and do things that, you know, maybe people would tend to do when they're younger? Oh, absolutely. You're never too old to try something new if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And that's how I felt. I, in fact, uh, I was signed to go on a, a photographic safari many years ago, and I received. We pay, you know, we had to pay in advance. And my husband didn't like traveling after he was in the war. He didn't want to go anywhere, any except the United States. But uh, he had paid for my trip. And uh, about two weeks before we were, I was leaving, I received a notice in the mail that if for another couple of hundred dollars, you could go for a, um, a I'm having a senior moment, and a um, balloon ride, you know, a, yeah. up in the air. Hot air balloon, yeah. And, uh, and I said, oh, that sounds great. So I told my husband, he says, you are not going up in a balloon. It's too dangerous and you can't go. So I said, okay, and I took out money from the bank in my account, and I took it with me, and when I reached Kenya, I paid for the balloon ride, and I didn't tell him about it until I came home with with the pictures to show him. I said, see, everything turned out fine. (laughs) So uh, otherwise, he never stopped me. If I told him I wanted to go here, there, the other place, okay, no problem. (laughs) I'm not going with him. But I don't want to travel, but you can go if you want to. <laughs> and that's how we do it. Well, you've certainly been all over the world. You've been to over 30 countries and 30 states. What have been some of your favourite places to go and see in that time? Well, Kenya was fascinating, going to see, being especially in the balloon, going over the um, the animals, the hyenas and the yeah. lions, seeing them wander around underneath you was just fascinating. Um, I've had different kinds of experiences in, in Paris and London. Uh, and locally, we went to see, uh, you know, the Kentucky Derby that was run just the other day. Oh, yeah. um, we, My son and I travel a lot together, uh, my oldest son. 
and uh, we went to uh, Churchill Downs to see where they run the, the uh, Kentucky Derby, and that was very interesting because the way it looks when the when the Derby is on, and the way it looked two weeks before <laughs> were two different things. Like yeah. They hadn't spruced up the lawn or um, anything else, but things like that. But that most people don't get a chance to see. Um, and that's what I enjoy doing. We 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 have a friend who's a uh, an actor and, and um, well known show, Broadway shows, mm. but he's in the traveling tour of uh, these shows. So if we haven't been to a city that he's in at the time, we'll take a plane or a train and go to that city and spend a couple of days there, see the show again, and. Um, and that's a lot of fun. And you meet such wonderful people who are willing to talk to you and tell them what they're doing or where they're going. And that's interesting to me because I like learning about other people and what they do. And you've frequented upscale New York City restaurants and done all sorts of things, even kind of within the US. So how yeah. do you maintain such an active lifestyle? Just the way I live at home. Yeah. That's, that's it. We take a plane. I become We become friendly with the steward, the, the male or the stewardess. I don't know what they're called now, <laughs> but we become friendly with them. And especially now that I'm 98, almost 99, yeah. they believe that they tell me I'm the oldest person passenger on the plane. And one, one time, not that long ago, um, a um, steward who we were in first class and the steward from the second class came over to me and he handed me a, um, a piece of chocolate wrapped in a gold wrapper. And he said, you're a spring chicken. I mean, it's a <laughs> So that's fun. That's me. You know, I I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Do you get treated a bit like a VIP because of your age? No, no, because they don't know my age unless I tell them, and I rarely tell them. It yeah. was only because they only found out about my age on that trip was because um, the female, the stewardess, uh, came over to me and she said. Um, I'll let you in on a secret. I don't usually tell people this. My name is, and I don't remember the name, but it was very unusual. I'd never heard it before. So I said, I'll let you in on a secret. I think I'm the oldest passenger on the plane. <laughs> so she said, all right, how old are you? I said, 98. She said, yeah, I think you are the oldest <laughs> passenger on the plane. But, she, but I would never would have taken you for 98. I said, yeah. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the fun part of, of age. But I have a great time. Yeah. I have a great time. I have three sons. I have uh, four great grandchildren, and uh, life is good for me. And I yeah. think that way all the time. And life hasn't always been been good. You know, I have my ups and downs. My my husband passed away mm. uh, up, up two months before his seventy fifth birthday, and. Um, but as I said, life goes on and you can't sit around and mope. It's, it's not going to bring him back. Yeah. And so I continue on. Yeah. So even at the age that you're at now, are you still able to travel around places and is the thrill still with you? Absolutely. You can't keep me back. Oh, <laughs> I'll find a way of getting wherever you want to go. And that's, that's what we do. Yeah. Is the thrill of seeing new places still as exciting as it was when you were maybe 20? That's right. Yes, yes. Still a thrill to see new places. But yeah. Either in Europe or Asia or New York or Cincinnati or wherever. You yeah. can always find something to do that's interesting. Now, you've certainly lived through a lot of historical events and actually in 1941 you were at the University of Wisconsin when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor so how did that day impact you and what were your thoughts at the time? Well we found out about it because we heard a newsboy shouting about the US in war or something like that and we all ran outside to get, pick up the newspaper and then my first saw of my, my brother was in the reserve army and I called him immediately and he said, don't worry, everything will be all right. I don't know what I'm, where I'm going to be sent or what I'm going to be doing, but I'll keep in touch and everything is going to be fine. And everything was, 
he was fortunate that he was never sent overseas. Mm. He was teaching flying to um, prospective um, pilots. And uh, we kept in touch. And then we were both, and we both are dog, well, he was no longer here. But at the time, we were both dog lovers. And he had a dog at when he was at one airfield, but they weren't allowed to take the dog with them when they moved to another airfield. <laughs> so I was living at home at the time. So I was the one who became the owner of the dog. So I became the owner of a, a Great Dane. I became the owner of a, um, a Dalm- not a Dalmatian. I forgot what it was. <laughs> I can't think of the name now, but <laughs> I I dogs, big yeah. dogs, little dogs. They were became my dogs, and, I, and as I said, I love dogs anyway. So it was it was fun to find out that a new dog was coming home. Yeah. He had it just where he was going. A year yeah. later, in 1942, you attended a rooftop concert featuring Frank Sinatra and the Tommy Dorsey band. What did oh, you? Yeah, that was in 19, that was, I was 18, so that was yeah. like 42, yes, it was 1942. Yeah. Yes, it was fast enough to singing with, I don't know if you know of Tem- Tommy Dorsey, but he mm. was popular at the time. And uh, Frank was the uh, the male singer at the band. Yeah. And when he got up to sing, he said, uh, um, I just want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that I became the father of a baby girl. Her name is Nancy. Wow. And that's <laughs> so that was fun. That was very nice. And he, he and and uh, he left the band and, and he went out on his own. And he had he at, at near the beginning of his career, he had a, a downsize and he was we was, was appearing in a restaurant as a guest speaker mm. and my mother was sitting in front of he where he was standing and after he finished singing and he left the went out he wasn't in the restaurant part of the area then my mother said he will never get anywhere with that voice. <laughs> and I didn't ever let her get away with it anymore I said I don't think you knew much about singing mom <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> because he certainly knew how to get along <laughs> yeah absolutely of course as you mentioned earlier you're good friends with Broadway actors and actresses so do you think your friend with actors and actresses has influenced your love for Broadway musicals? Oh, oh no, it, it, it couldn't. It, it, well, I guess it made me more comfortable with, with musical. But mm. I, I like the theatre, I like the drama. Uh, but unfortunately, my son, who takes me to these different musicals, um, doesn't care for dramas or even comedy. It's strictly musicals with him. Yeah. But I, my parents took me to my first Broadway show. I was 12 years old and I became hooked. I I loved going to the theater. I, I My most exciting uh, time was when my parents were given seats to an opening of The Merry Widow. And I was able to go to an opening and I was, what, maybe 14 years old. And I was so excited about it because all the women were in evening gowns and the men were in tuxedos. And it was such an exciting place for me. And um, But now it's different. People go in slacks and they go in uh, sandals. And <laughs> I, I still ha- like to get dressed nicely, yes. <laughs> putting it nicely. <laughs> Are there any musicals that you're planning on going to see anytime soon? Well, the only thing that I'm going to see is a show that I've already seen twice. Ooh. And we're going again. And my son has seen it four times. And we're going wow. together to take my grandson and, and his wife to see the show. And I don't know if it's going to go to, a man, uh, to England or not, mm. but the name of it is Some Like It Hot. Oh. And it, it was a, originally a movie starring Marilyn Miller. And it, it's a wonderful, wonderful show. And we enjoy it. I, I, no matter how many times I'll see it, I don't get tired of it because it was so such fun. And I like fun. Yeah. And um, and then we saw another show, which we're hoping to go see again soon. And that's called New York, New York, yeah. which is all about New York. 
And that is, a, it's the most remarkable show I've seen. The finale is un, completely unexpected. No one knows what's going to happen until it happens. Yeah. And we don't tell, if you're, you're smart, you don't tell the ending of the show because they, it, it's such an unexpected delight to see. Yes. So I don't want to spoil it for everybody. <laughs> Yeah. Is it like the mouse trap we have in London where it's like a murder mystery? You're not supposed to reveal the ending to anyone else. Right. That's been in London for a long time, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's hundreds of Sounds years right. old, maybe. Yes. Well, you're, of course, 98, nearly 99. So when is yes. the big day? When will you turn 99? June 30th. Uh-huh. And are there plans on how you're going to celebrate it? Are we going to celebrate it? Oh, yes, yeah. my son is, make, has, has for the last five or six years and, and before that in, intermittently, but he's making a, a party for me. And uh, he won't tell me, well, I know who's, who he's invited, all of our friends, yeah. um, but he won't tell me anything about it. In fact, we were out the other day and I said to him, uh, Rick, are there going to be flowers, centerpieces on the table? He said, all of a sudden you're asking me, and I'm not telling you. <laughs> so, so I said, well, I only wanted to know because if they're not centerpieces, I know what I want to do for a centerpiece. But it was a moot question. No more information was given. Sure. And so I have a surprise for him. I, 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 can't, I won't even tell you, tell you because he's listening to this interview. <laughs> so I can't tell you what it is. But it's going to be a surprise for him and for the people who were at the party. Uh-huh. And that's, the, that's what I do fun. I want to have, let, have fun and have the people I'm with have fun at the time. And that's what we do. Yeah. Has he put any thought into next year? Because that's going to be extra special. I call it the double O's. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I don't know if he had or not. I've been thinking about it, but I say, you know, I want to enjoy 99 first and then I'll think yeah. about 100. But I jokingly said to my, my younger grandchildren and great-grandchildren, do, would you believe I'm going to be a century old? <laughs> No, that's century. <laughs> yes, that's a hundred. And they, they can't get over it. I mean, a century is something they read about in history books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And I hope that the good Lord keeps me here for that, that birthday. Yeah, absolutely. Well, many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great to have you here on the show. Thank you very much. It's been great speaking to you, Toby. Good luck and good health.